Go for it. See if you can simplify the wrist and leg. If you finish quickly on that simplification, try this next problem. That's what we'll start with after this. Okay, so we're looking at this one. I'm going to finish this thing off. I'll give you some more time to do this in just a second. Uh, let's go ahead and, and work on this so you know whether we got it right or wrong. Firstly, with the three, we're not going to do anything with that three. We're just going to leave that out front for now. But we are going to try to simplify the inside of our radical right here. Now that 32, we're looking for a perfect fourth power that divides 32. The only perfect fourth power I know that's less than 32 is actually 16. That's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. That's, that's only one. So unless that goes into it, we're not going to be able to simplify this. 16, fortunately, does go into 32. How many times? So 16 is the perfect fourth power we were looking for. 16 times 2 gives us 32, so we're going to be able to split up our 32 like that. Now, x to the 12. I'm going to look for as many x's to the power 4 as I can. In this case, we have x to the 4th, and we're going to have that three times. I'll make sure that I double check to see that that actually adds up because we're, we're adding those exponents now. So it's multiplying to 12, and it does 4, 4, 4. That gives us actually 12. So we know we have the same expression so far. Now, the y to the fifth, I can also break that up. The power is greater than the root. That means I can write this as I'm going to choose to do y to the fourth times y. That's as many y to the fourth as I can, and whatever is left over, that still makes up y to the fifth. Did you write it like that as well? Good deal. Now, we're still going to leave that 3 out there. That 3 hangs out until the very end until we can multiply it by something. We'll take the 4th root of 16, that gives you 2. 4th root of 2, I can't do anything with that. I'm going to circle it, it's going to stay inside of my radical. 4th root of x to the 4th, that gives you x, then x, then x, another y, but that y I can't do much with. The power is less than the root, that means I can't simplify it anymore. So there's only two things left in my radical. Definitely want to make sure I have a fourth root. Make sure that four is there. Then I'm going to have a two y inside of it. I'll clean this up a little bit. I know three times two is six. That's why we left that three out there. We didn't lose that. This gives you the x to the third y. And then we want to make sure we do a fourth root of two y as well. That's as simple as I can make it. That's a lot more concise than this. Looks a lot better than that, doesn't it? That would be a much easier to work with than this and another problem. How many people were able to make it down that far? Good for you. That's good. Okay. Now, I want you to continue working on this one. 
Notice a couple things about this. Firstly, we have the same type of root or the same type of root. You are going to combine those first. The 5, however, is not on the numerator like the 3 was. It's on the denominator. So keep that on the denominator. If you end up multiplying by 3 at the, or sorry, 5, if you end up multiplying by 5 at the end, you kind of did something wrong. Right here, the 5 should be on a denominator at the end of your problem. If you do it the same way as this problem, you've done something wrong. Okay? Because right now, this 3 was on the top, that's why we multiplied by 3. This 5 is on the bottom. We should have 1 over 5 somewhere. So continue working on that. I'll give you about another minute. <coughs> about to get going on this thing. As I was saying, the, the first thing you should notice on this is that 5, now, the, while it's outside the radical, we are going to have to deal with it at some point. We don't deal with it initially, but we do need to notice that it is on the denominator of a fraction. So when you're going through this problem, sure, take the 5 out. But we can't write it as 5 times something. Eh, that's not right. That would move it to the numerator of a fraction. That would be like 5 over 1. When in fact, what we, what we really have is this is like one-fifth times. That five is on the denominator, the five is on the denominator. So instead of five times, you're going to have one-fifth times. Did you guys do that as well? Yeah. Okay, so make sure you, ha you have that in the appropriate spot. Now the rest of it, that, that's okay. We're going to break that off, and we're going to combine these radicals. Since I have a cube root and a cube root, I know I can write one large cube root of this fraction as being part of the radi radicand. We certainly don't want to try to simplify it first, it's way too hard. Make sure we combine them, especially with that negative exponent. Make sure you combine them, that takes care of the negative exponent. There's nothing you can do with it here, but here you can combine those and that negative exponent's gone. Does that make sense for you? Uh, that's kind of nice. So we'll leave that one fifth out front. Again, we're not going to touch it yet. And the cube root will be able to simplify. So 40 over 5, that's going to give you 8. X to the fifth over x to the negative one, you're subtracting exponents. Five minus negative one doesn't give you four, gives you good. So you're taking five minus negative one. Five minus negative, that's adding. Lastly, we got y to the, now that, that you do still subtract, you subtract in both cases, but we have seven minus positive two, that's going to give you, that's y to the fifth. Show of hands, how many people were able to make it that far? Good, that's the most important step right there. If you can make it that far, you have a much better chance of succeeding in this problem right now. Because this is something we've done before. At this point, we'll try to break this up to simplify this. It's a cube root, so we're looking for perfect cubes. Of course, 8 is already a perfect cube, so I'm going to leave that alone for now. I know the cube root of 8 is 2, so why change that? We don't want to do that. Inside, though, I have x to the 6th. I'm going to write as many x to the 3rd powers as I can. Fortunately for us, that still is x to the 6th. We have two x cubes. We're not going to have any x's left inside a radical. y to the 5th, I know I want to break off a y to the 3rd, because that's going to simplify, and I'm left with a y to the 2nd. Still so far so good? All right, cool. <clears throat> that's the fun part. You get to cross some stuff out. We're still going to leave that 1 5th. Cube root of 8 gives you 2. Cube root of x cubed gives you x. 
cube root of x cubed gives you x. That's why we did that, because every time the power matches the root, we get to cross it out, take an x outside, or a y outside in this case. And lastly, well, the y squared, the power is less than the root. It's, it's certainly not the same thing, so we can't cross it out. We can't take the y out. We leave it inside of a radical, so we get a cube root of y squared. Did you make it that far? Yeah, no? Good, all right. The last thing you got to do is clean this thing up a little bit. Now, when you do that, I know this is going to be 2x squared y and a cube root of y squared. What do you do with the 5, though? Yeah, it's just going to be on the denominator. One-fifth times any expression says you're going to have that expression over 5. Multiplying by a fraction is the same thing as dividing by its reciprocal. So if I multiply by one-fifth, the same thing as dividing by 5. So this is the same thing as that. That's a true statement. So if you have the 5 on the denominator, notice 5 was on the denominator the whole entire time. Just stuck on the denominator. We actually didn't even do anything with it. Now if this had been like 10 or 15 or 20 or something, you could simplify that for sure. But at this point, we, we can't simplify that any more than we just did. Did it make sense that the 5 stuck on the denominator the whole time? Definitely don't want to have 10 right here. You give me 10 right there, that means you multiplied by 5 instead of multiplying by 1 over 5. That's a different expression. Would you raise your hand feel okay with what we just talked about? Might want to try some of those problems. There's several of these on the homework. Make sure you get them right, check your answers in the back of the book. Uh, make sure you can do them without following your notes all the time, okay? You need to be able to look at that and be like, oh yeah, I know exactly what to do. Bam, bam, bam. At, at, when we get time for the test, that's how well you need to know it. Now, are you ready to move on and start adding and subtracting these things? Oh yeah. yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited about it. I don't know you guys. I think it's not some head shakes. No, I'm not ready. I'm not, I'm not ready. Come on. No, you're ready. You're ready. Trust me. I'm the teacher. I know. I know. I can see it in your eyes. You guys are just, you're sandbagging, right? No. What? Sandbagging. <laughs> you never heard the expression sandbagging? No. No. Am I that old? Oh, my God. <laughs> How many people know what sandbagging means? Okay, you're younger than me. That's good. <laughs> uh, sandbagging means that you... You pretend like you can't get something, that way when it comes time to actually do it, you either don't have to do it or you perform really well at it. So it looks like you're not. So it looks like you just, like uh, we used to sandbag it at, uh, at weightlifting class all the time. So like when, when you started out, you're like, oh, this is really hard. And then when it came time for you to actually, actually do it, you just go, and that way you would get full credit for the class because you sandbagged, right? So you didn't actually perform, well, you didn't actually improve. You just looked like you improved in sandbagging. Anyway, you learned something about sandbagging today. That was all about math, wasn't it?